Do you really know just how heavy 24 hours of metal music really is? About the weight of your mobile phone. Download our free andrewhogue.com iPhone and Android apps now. That way, you'll never be far away from us. This is andrewhogue.com, Australia's only 24-7 rock metal radio station, established 2012, loud and proud. And we are always proud to get exclusives for this station, but this is an absolute world exclusive. We have a really good friend of, uh, of mine on the air to uh, join us about a whole bunch of things that's been happening in his life the last couple of years. It's been quite a, quite a journey, I must say. So let's welcome Chris Adler to the airways of andrewhogue.com. And we're going to check in to see what life is like after Lamb of God and everything else that's happening in the world of uh, Mr. Chris Adler. Welcome to andrewhogue.com, buddy. Hey, man. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for uh, letting me stay up late and chat with you tonight. <laughs> Not a problem. It is a pleasure, of course, to get a chance to, to sort of catch up with you because obviously everyone's aware of, of what sort of went down somewhat with uh, you, you know, departing from Lamb of God or whichever way people want to view it. Uh, and, you know, the first thing some people tend to do is defend themselves or, you know, sort of get out there and tell their story but you've kind of done a different thing you've kind of gone your own way and sort of laid low in some respects and uh you know kept to yourself in certain ways so can we get a little bit of an update on on you know how things are for you and what the hell has been going on <laughs> yeah it's been a quite the interesting uh journey as you say uh from that point in time till till now and um you know we i think everybody parted on good terms i'm really excited to hear their uh new record which also um happens to be coming out today so you know I, i'm thrilled to hear what's going on with them I'm, I'm sure they're doing very well uh i left my drum throne in good hands with art who, who has been a friend i think i met art uh, when he was 17 years old, I've got a picture of me and him standing outside the bus when he stood there waiting for an autograph. So uh, he and I have been, you know, friends for a long time. And obviously the guys in the band are not only family, but uh, became great friends over 25 years. And it's quite a career that we had. Um, it didn't end. I don't think anybody from either side would say that it ended really particularly well uh, in that I think we all hoped and dreamed and, and wanted all the same thing, but just couldn't seem to get ourselves on the same page for whatever reason. Um, and um, so it's been a great time for me to settle back into uh, normal life, if you will, and uh, explore some other things. And, you know, I've been out, I've done some uh, clinic tours, uh, I've connected with other artists and just kind of been really connecting at home with my family. Um, you know, I missed a lot of birthdays and a lot of barbecues uh, over those 25 years. So it's been great to, to be home. I've, I've done a lot of volunteer work uh, around the area, Habitat for Humanity and SPCA and, and stuff like that. And really just kind of kept myself busy. And then, of course, you know, as we, we're all kind of subjected to dealt with this coronavirus and now this incredible um, movement uh, around the world uh, of equal rights and it really tied into some some other kind of musical things that yet as much as I love doing what I was doing uh, it was it certainly seemed like it was kind of a, a good time to maybe step away and I think everybody wins in that regard and I, I wish the best for them I'm sure they do. You know, you have to speak to them. I'm not sure, but I, I hope they do for me. And, but in the meantime, with everything that's been going on, it also created a lot of inspiration for me to do some other things musically. And, it, you know, I didn't leave because I didn't want to be involved uh, with music or play the drums. Um, it just, the shoe didn't fit anymore on either side. So um, I've been kind of exploring a lot of other things uh, in that, in that same world. And, uh, couple of interesting things have come out of it you're certainly one person that doesn't sort of you know rest on your laurels or uh on, on your achievements you always continue to move forward and you're always an incredibly driven person i mean i think that's what really shone through uh as you know a lot of people saw you as a sort of 
you know, the main driving force behind Lamb of God purely because of your, you know, discipline and uh, your, your really positive attitude and, and uh, mental approach as well, not just for playing drums, but also just, uh, you know, wanting to uh, achieve. And I know you did mention you had a few other sort of projects going on. I think you're doing stuff with um, Nitro uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, can you give us a bit of an update on where Chris Adler is in 2020 on the musical front? Yeah, so you know, it's interesting that you say that, and I've um, I've never really tried to promote myself as far as like some sort of uh, motivational person or whatever. But I think the uh, via the interviews or DVDs or, or whatever there is, there is uh, I've I've gotten that same kind of response um, from more than just yourself, saying like, well, weren't weren't you kind of the 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 engine in the whole thing like what, what's going on here now and, and all that kind of stuff well you know I, I definitely didn't stall out and like you said I, I, I have done some other projects I worked with the band Hail um, I've done some independent recording here and there and definitely keeping my chops up and, and doing stuff at home but one of the things that I think is, you know really came about through this whole thing is, has been a an incredible, incredible opportunity for me to kind of reach out and branch out and um, take things in, um, you know, more as they come instead of kind of working with the same machine, uh, seeing what else is out there and collaborating with people that I wouldn't have had the chance to necessarily uh, with Lamb of God. Um, you know, Lamb of God is its own thing, and I'm very, very proud of not only what we accomplished, but my part uh, that was played in that band and what we were able to accomplish together, and, and certainly with each other's help in doing it. So, um, I, I, I don't, I'm very proud of that. I don't, I, I don't think there's anything, anybody, anywhere that can take away from that. And going forward, I think a lot of people would expect me to jump into something uh, very similar to Lamb of God or some sort of, um, you know, Metallica versus Megadeth kind of uh, vibe. And, you know, that that's not really in the cards for me. I would love to do something exactly the same as Lamb of God, but I, I don't imagine that would um, exactly fill my creative uh, interests at this point. That is what it is. I'm, I'm happy to be a, have had been a part of it. I think if I was in that band, I'd be pushing even further uh, than what we'd ever done before. And you know, like I, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm excited to hear their new record. Uh, there was no, I didn't leave the band because I, I was wanting to do something too heavy or too light or anything like that. It was just kind of a mutual uh, crossroads. And uh, in the, in that meantime, I have connected with a couple other people Uh well, I mentioned earlier that I had gone on tour across the Middle East with a band called Hail, which is kind of this, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, D list of celebrity metal guys that get together and just go play some covers and have some fun and go to these off the beat um, paths, places, uh, locations. And uh, I was lucky enough to catch up with James Lomenzo on that hail tour. And he and I have crossed paths many times and, and have been friends for a long time and talked about, you know, yeah, if and when, whenever possible, like, we should get together and then, you know, make some music. And in the meantime, I also uh, am still a huge fan of music and I'm sorting out and searching for and kind of, I wouldn't say, I'm on the ground level. I'm a bit too old to pretend uh, that kind of thing, but uh, definitely keeping up with as much as I can and what's going on. And um, right around the same time that hail was going on, maybe a little before I had come across, uh, I used the, um, the site Bandcamp a lot to kind of sort out new artists. And I had come across um, a guy named Myron, in California, who is, uh, he describes himself as the uh, pioneer of soft shred. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was just a really fun uh, kind of vibe. It's the kind of thing that, you know, makes you want to go to the beach or, you know, helps you you know sleep through a flight. But it, it, it's really very talented, kind of great 
look on things. It, it's it's like um, I don't know how you want to describe it. It's kind of like if Knight Rider met Marty Friedman, uh, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you know, I've been listening to him for a long time, and he caught up with uh, a Bandcamp uh, sales receipt because I bought several of his records and got in touch with me. He's like, I don't know if this is, you know, really Chris Eiler, but if it is, you know, thanks so much, man. I'm a huge fan of there. So we started talking and um, James and I on the hail tour kind of connected. And then I did a clinic tour uh, across India. And part of that clinic tour was me doing my thing and uh, um, clinics are rather boring. So we added uh, something else to it. So later than the evening of the clinic tours, we also do a show, uh, including some of the best known artists across India in whatever kind of state or province I was in at the, in those locations. And I ran into a guy named Garish Pradhan, who, a vocalist there, uh, who was fairly well known across India in his band, Garish and the Chronicles. And, the guy just blew me away, man. It was like, I, I had not heard that. Yeah. I, I heard it, but it was kind of, it was, it was very eerily familiar yet modern. And I, I couldn't put my finger out, but it was fantastic. I was there with my fiance Sue. And I remember at the first rehearsal that we had, I called her at the hotel and I was like, listen, get in a cab right now. You have to come hear this guy sing. And I'm not one for vocalists. Uh, I love instrumental music and I, I love kind of my craft and I've never been one. You know, the, the singer's always the guy that, you know, they call it LSD, lead singer disease. And <laughs> the singer's always a guy that, you know, doesn't carry anything out of the gig or, yep. or do anything. So it's never been, you know, I, I guess I, in the end, to be honest, I, I've probably just been jealous of the fact that, you know, oh, well, you didn't have to learn how to do all this shit. You just sing. Uh, but this was the kind of, thing that hit me to a point where I was like, this guy is incredibly talented. And so he and I kept in touch and I'd been talking to James uh, from Hale again, and now Myron. And I kind of just aligned the four stars and said, Hey, you know, I know we don't know each other, but let's get to know each other and maybe just see if something might come out of it. And um, again, this is not, uh, a band that I left uh, Lamb of God or Megadeth for. This was not my intent. This was a, a, a real kind of organic uh, connect of four people that love music and love having a good time. And I, I think we've put together something um, that has a, a really positive message and it also has been a lot of fun for us. Um, it's probably not what people would expect from me. It's not what I actually expected from myself. Uh, leaving Lamb of God, but yeah, again, it's been just a, a really cool, organic way of connecting with other people and making something that feels good and not trying to come up with kind of false drama or just being mad all the time kind of kind of vibe. And um, I'm really, really proud of what we put together. We uh, have gotten together now since last November uh, with uh, the coronavirus. Uh, doing its thing. We've had plenty of time to kind of craft what we um, had in mind and, and get it to a point where we feel really proud of kind of sharing that with the world. So that's kind of where we're at today. And uh, as you already have, and, and maybe a little unexpected to uh, this interview, um, I've shared with you the, the whole new AP that we put together. And it's a special day in the world right now on uh, Juneteenth. Uh, where everybody's kind of taking a moment to recognize everyone else. And uh, there's a message in here that certainly goes right along with that. And we've done our best to be respectful of that and also make this thing as po- easy as possible to, if you're interested, uh, get a hold of. And uh, you can speak to the details. I'll send you some stuff. But in the meantime, I- I've sent you all the tunes and I hope everybody that's listening enjoys it okay can you give us a name for this new project yeah we decided to call it firstborn i can i think it means different things to each of us but to me it 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 means kind of uh there's something about and the way we spell it is not standard there's an e at, at the end of it which to some degree means we're kind of carrying the weight 
of something. And I, I think we are all, each of us in the band are kind of in or coming out of something where we do or have uh, carried the weight of a lot of things. And going forward, uh, we're kind of set up to continue to do so and strong from it. So that's that's where this whole thing comes from. And so the band is called Firstborn. And we've got an EP of five songs that we've really kind of kept under the radar for God, months and months now. And I, I think it's it's time to hatch, if you will. And what about, I know when this corona crap lifts uh, eventually, will this be a full-fledged sort of touring band? I know you're everyone's in different locations these days, uh, but is this something you're wanting to, to take out onto uh, the road? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've been together obviously doing a lot of the recording and writing and uh, we've actually been fielding. So, you know, I can't say it's been absolutely quiet uh, in that. I think a lot of that industry people uh, are aware of it and that we put out the idea of doing exactly what you're talking about is getting out there, getting on the road, having some fun with it. You know, I, none of us are done with this whole um, circuit of, touring and being out there i think we all love that aspect of this and as much as we do the writing process so we're we've already uh, been speaking to several of the festival promoters for next year uh being a part of the some of the stuff going across europe and in india and australia and uh, we're also you know in talks with a couple different booking agents about tours that are kind of it's 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 a bit tough right now as you might imagine where it's like, well, we think we might be doing this, you know, here or there, but we're, we are starting to get those calls and there's several conversations underway about what it is that we're going to be doing. So we're actually really, really looking forward to that first show as soon as it's safe for everybody to get it done. Now, if someone's to ask you, you know, one word to describe the sound of Firstborn without hearing it, how would you uh, uh, put a description on its sound? Well, I'm limited to one word. Well, I'd make it two words. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy fun. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. Um, there's something, again, nobody came into it with this purposeful idea of it being, you know, heavier than what we've done before or some sort of yacht rock or, or anything like that. It was just a real kind of organic collaboration of kind of the sounds the be the best parts of each of us going into this and it, it created something that's kind of a bit right now probably outside of the the typical sub categories uh, or sub genres of metal I, I i don't know i mean i can tell you you know we're all fans of you know, kind of the, the stuff in the 80s and stuff like that. And again, that's not something that I would have brought to Lamb of God. Um, but here it was kind of this wide open thing of, you know, what are we going to do? What are we capable of doing? Having a good time with not being constantly uh, pushed to this has to be, you know, faster. This has to be heavier. It was just like, well, it's, you know, what do you got today? And being able to say like, that sounds great. I don't really care if it's um, 600 BPM or uh, whatever it is. Yep. It's just like, does, does it make you feel good? So it's, it's actually been a lot of fun, and which is why I called it kind of heavy fun. It, it's definitely got a, a hard edge to it, but uh, there, there's something very light about it as well. And you can pick up on that in, in the vibe. I, I think it is that kind of, the music that as much as Lamb of God, it was, you know, my, when I was in that band, it was always kind of like, you know, does this make you want to drive fast and punch something? And now this, it was more of a, does this make you want to drive fast with your windows open <laughs> kind of thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it, same kind of deal. Like we're, we're still, still wanting to be, you know, interesting and heavy and fun and a bit artistic on that level. But, uh, it, it's more about, you know, let's have a good time with this. And we're all established. We're, you know, been there, done that kind of thing. And then let's, let's not try to show off or be, you know, the, the toughest guy on the block. Let's just have some fun.
Well, it sounds like a lot of fun too. Now, I'll just give a bit of info to the uh, listeners out there. The website is The First Born. That's B O R N E dot com. You can also find the debut EP available at Bandcamp, also on Spotify and iTunes. But also, a good thing too, uh, it's uh, got an exclusive deal with uh, uh, a great uh, uh, site and also person, Doug Bear from Rare Records, which is rarerecords.com.au, where it's the, I think, only. Uh, exclusive deal in the world for the uh, 12-inch coloured vinyl and also a separate uh, coloured 7-inch vinyl that features a, a, an extra track as well. So if you want to get into that, you certainly can go to uh, rarerecords.com.au and also, again, go to thefirstborn.com as well. And again, Chris, it is, it's just great that, uh, you know, you haven't quit playing music. I never had a doubt that that was uh, an option in any way. Because uh, it is amazing when, you know, we see a lot of other musicians depart from other bands and people just sort of sometimes quickly erase thinking, oh, once they're gone, they're just going to hang it up forever. And again, it's all down to personal choice. But for someone like yourself, as I mentioned earlier, with your positive drive, that certainly was never uh, an option. So it is great to uh, be able to support you further in your uh, career of uh, drumming and heavy metal right here on andrewhogue.com. And I thought what we would do as a special treat and also a celebration uh, for yourself of your, uh, you know, continued musical endeavours is to play uh, the debut EP in its entirety uh, after we finish uh, chatting. Any sort of final words you want to say to people about, um, you know, Firstborn and uh, anything else that uh, the Adler wants to, uh, to say? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just thrilled to be able to continue to do this. And like you said, I, I don't think there's a, there's any way that, uh, you know, I would walk away from everything that I've done and just kind of go into, you know, retirement of, of some kind. I mean, this is, this is what I do. This is it's all I know how to do, to be honest. Uh, it's what I'm good at. It's what I feel good doing. And I, I love doing it. I'm lucky to be surrounded by these artists, um, Garish, Lomenzo and Myron and be able to put something like this together. I'm looking forward to everything that we're going to be able to do together. We actually are like real behind the scenes kind of friends. So it's going to be fun to do it. It's great to have the support of people like yourself and the fan base that has kind of followed me. And I love kind of being as active and on fire with this thing as I am. It's a great chance to kind of, keep up and also keep a smile on my face while doing it. It's, it's, it's a nice transition, if you will. And I mean, the main, you spoke about Doug, um, you know, both of you and I have been friends with Doug for quite a long time. And yeah, we, what we decided to do um, was to do this kind of Australasia release only with him. So it's, it's not even available uh, in the U S and, the whole idea, really, to be honest with you, is um, putting together a, a couple dudes so I can get back over to Australia, which is my favorite place in the world, and I'm not just making that up. Doug and I have talked about me moving to Melbourne for probably 15 years, so look forward to throwing a few back with you and, and my friends over there, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, we look forward to having you back uh, in the land of Oz, and of course, can't wait to see the firstborn be unleashed. Let's hear the entire uh, EP right now. And uh, we'll kick off with the first song, Primordial. You want to say a couple of quick words about this track? It's the first track, and uh, I like it. <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> Let's check out some Firstborn here on andrewhope.com. Thank you so much, Chris. Right on, man. <laughs> 